Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's 6x6 paper pad card making video. Today I've pulled out one of each page from my paper pad and I'm going to try some stamping and die cutting. I've got this stamp set which has coordinating dies and coordinating stencils with it and I thought instead of stamping on white paper and then colouring them I'd stamp on some patterned paper and die cut them out and see how they look. For the flowers, I thought I would use this spotty paper. So I'm going to spread these out so that I can die cut them. And I'm going to heat emboss them, I think in gold. So I'm going to give this a going over with corn flour, also known as cornstarch. And I'll ink these up with embossing ink. I think I'll do that twice just to be on the safe side. And now I'll dip this in my gold embossing powder and heat it with my heat tool. So that's looking really pretty. I'm going to set that aside to cool and do the same with one of the green papers and the leaves. So there's my leaves. I did two of each leaf just so I've got plenty. I do have some stencils to go with these flowers so I'm going to add a little bit of colour to the papers. I don't have coordinating colours in the Catherine Pooler inks so I'm going to have to use Distress Oxides which are a bit more opaque than I'd like but if I just add a light blush we should be all right. So I've got Victorian Velvet and now I can add the next layer and get it in the right position. And I think we'll have a bit of salt water taffy for the next one. So I've got a subtle colour to them so I'll do that to the rest. Now I'm just going to brush over them with this microfiber cloth to get any ink off of the gold embossing. So I'm quite pleased with that. I like that little pattern poking through the colouring. I don't think I'm going to bother doing any stenciling on the leaves. They're quite small and they've got a lot of detail on them already. But I am going to cut them out with their coordinating dies. So there we have a little pile of flowers and leaves. So my card base is about six by six inches. I've got a panel that is about five and a quarter inches and I'm going to mount that on a piece of this. So this card panel has now got a delicate green border all the way around and a white border around that which I think looks rather nice and I'm going to cut a strip of this tile style piece of paper I've sliced through the middle of these green dots here and here so that this is balanced and symmetrical slice that off there so it matches that end Let's see if it fits or not yes it does with a little bit of a a border at the ends. So I'll add that with some glue. And now I'm thinking I'll add some flowers and some leaves. Something like that. This bottom flower I'm going to add there with glue. This top flower I want to give it a bit of dimension but I don't want to add a whole layer of craft foam. I'm trying to be conscious of the fact that people may want to post these cards. I do donate most of my cards to local charity shops to sell uh, and I don't want people to be surprised when their card won't go through the post as a regular letter. So I'm going to cut one more of these big flowers out of smooth white cardstock and then layer them up. So that can sit on there like that, overlapping this flower and just going off the edge there a bit. Now I'll tuck in a few leaves. So 
So I've got some more for another card. So I've got a little happy birthday stamp here that I'm going to stamp directly on the card. And I'm going to use Victorian Velvet. That's splurged ever so slightly. I'm going to leave it like that and come back to it later and see if I think it needs fixing. But if I try and fix it now, I'm going to make it worse. I am going to use my blue bonnet coloured Zig Clean Colour Dot Marker to add a few little blue sprinkles. I was thinking about maybe adding some Nouveau Drops, but I think a few little non-dimensional sprinkles will do. And they tone in quite nicely with that blue. Right, I am going to leave it there today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas of something you can do with patterned paper that you have in your stash. You obviously don't need to have the same paper pads as me. Don't even need to use six by six paper pads. You could use uh, whatever paper that you have, even backgrounds and panels that you have made yourself with mixed media. So thanks for joining me and I hope to see you back here tomorrow for my next video. Bye for now.